the sort of theme we've had for probably two weeks now is what you can do with your pages using CSS to control the layout and to make the layout look pretty much any way you want. And we covered a number of basic schemes, fixed positioning, relative positioning, uh, absolute positioning, floating, grid view, flexbox, and so on. And of course, with, with, with some restrictions, you can mix and match some of those things as well. You could have, for example, a grid inside a grid, or a flexbox inside a grid, or any number of different things. Pardon me? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we are going to look at uh, responsive web design. And the idea of responsive web design is to make your page respond to the environment that it's in. So for example, the screen size is a big factor with this. Uh, but other things as well, whether you're printing it or viewing it on a, on a screen and so on. Those are all aspects of responsive design. And we talked about really a couple different things and we started one of the main aspects of it and we didn't get very far on it and that's what we'll do today. We talked about first of all a key to responsive design is using percentages rather than uh, absolute numbers. Okay? So instead of saying that something is 200 pixels wide, you might say it's 25% wide. And remember, that's of the available width. Remember, you could also use min and max width to make sure that something doesn't either go below or go above a certain amount. The other thing we talked about is putting the viewport command in your page. And finally, we started talking about media queries. Percentages, by the way, we mentioned even apply to images. Make the images a percentage of the page. All right? There's a couple ways to do media queries, and we'll look at both of them. Generally speaking, the idea, the approach that you want to take is called mobile first, where you want to sort of get your page set up so that it looks good in a mobile environment, and then you want to enhance it to take advantage of the bigger screen. Now that will often involve a mobile design which is a single column, all right, as opposed to multiple columns. Uh, maybe a little less content, maybe simpler content, for example, maybe no background images, uh, maybe uh, smaller image sizes or less images. Uh, and, and just in general, a simpler design. And then you sort of add stuff to it. This is known as progressive enhancement, whereas the, the screen on which you're displaying it gets bigger, you can add things. Now, we're going to sort of talk about a very straightforward cutoff, at least at first. Mobile and computer. But you can actually sort of fine tune that on how big the screen is. And you could have a different layout for a simple mobile phone versus a elaborate mobile phone versus a tablet versus a small screen, computer screen versus a large computer screen. So you can really fine tune this a variety of different ways. We're going to start off just looking at mobile versus desktop. So let's look at an example. And I'm going to use one of, the, one of the things that we did in previous classes as a starting point. So far, I haven't really looked at how my page looks on a mobile device. Well, we're going to start doing that. We're going to start off by looking at the design and viewing it on a mobile device and make sure that we're happy with that before we go on to the next step. If 
By the way, I would be remiss if I did not mention that next week, November 5th, the design for the project is due. So that's a big deal. So make sure that you are on top of that. Uh, ideally, by now you would have read through this stuff as we covered it in class as well and thought up of a project idea. If you have not, that should be sort of job one this week for you. In addition to all your other job ones that you have in this and other classes. So let's take a look at this file, see what all is in it. take a look at this one and see if this is the one I want to do. Yeah, we'll work with this one. And I'm going to sort of put the um, desktop version off to the side. And we're going to start with the mobile first. Here we already have the desktop version done. If we were to view this on a mobile device, it's not going to look real good. That's on a Pixel 2. I guess that's not horrible, but that sort of complicated layout is usually something you wouldn't necessarily want to do uh, on a mobile device. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out copy this so I have it. And I'm going to start out with a clean CSS file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly build this up back up. And I'm going to build it up to where I first have a mobile version of the page that I like. Now the mobile version is going to be simpler. It's going to only have one column. All right. It is probably not going to have the background image. It probably won't have the uh, transparency that this one has. So I'm going to make in general a simpler version of the page. Then I'm going to go back and add stuff back in till I get to where I want to be with the desktop version. So. Let's open it up in the browser, and right now there is absolutely no style to it whatsoever. Okay? And if I view this in a mobile device, Pixel 2, doesn't look horrible, right? But doesn't look particularly good. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure we have the viewpoint in here. Now this is something I sh would need to go back into all the pages in. Uh, I'll do it on the index page, uh, but you would need to do that on all the pages. So 
I say viewpoint, I meant viewport. <coughs> and it's just a simple command like this. I'll put that in here. Doesn't really have an impact, but it can. All right, now I'm going to sort of build this up. Let's give it a Let's give the background of the page a yellow background. Let's give the header a width. of 95% and a little bit of a border around it. Simply one pixel black solid border. Let's center it. And let's make it just a little bit narrower. And we'll do that with everything. And by everything, I mean the header, the nav, the sections, and the footer. Um, why not just buddy? Good question. Um, I deleted one. Um, more or less just the way that I do this, the, 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 the sort of style that I take does this, because this gives me the flexibility to do things a little different on one of them if I want to, and that puts that in from the start. Uh, if you get the same results, yeah, absolutely, you could, you could do that. But this sort of has the hook in for me to go and change each one individually if I, if I would choose to. Let's put a padding on this. Get a, little, a little bit of space going around it. If we go and look at this, that's what the page looks like now. Let's go and change the fonts on the body. I'll go in on the body and say font family. Helvetica, Ariel, Sans Serif, all right, something didn't work. Did I forget to save it? Um, let's go and make the H1s a little bit bigger. Back 
I'm going to do this. Header H1. Font size 2 RAM. And I'm going to change the font family for these um, to Times New Roman Sarah Okay, there we go. Let's say we're happy with this. All right, this is responsive, right? Because if I go and view this in a different size, it will scale itself. Very simple layout, not really anything, what would I say, uh, excessive or or over the top. Let's say these last two sections, we're just going to say hypothetically, these last two sections, I don't want to display on the mobile version, but I do want to display on the desktop version. All right? How can I hide them on the mobile version? How do I make things disappear? Well, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. You're getting into the media query part of it. I'm just concerned about the mobile part of it right now. How do I make something disappear in a style sheet? There's essentially visible hidden is one way, or display none. And there's a little bit of a difference in them. Let's take a minute. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a class on these two. Let's say these are two that this will appear on the desktop only. I'm going to give these guys a class of desktop only. Why am I giving it a, a class instead of an ID? Yeah, I mean, I sort of gave it away when I say I'm going to give these two guys, these two things, desktop only. Right? Because if there's more than one, you can't use an ID for it. So, did I intentionally what? Yeah, I, I sort of did. It's just sort of my convention. Okay. I, I wouldn't say, and it probably comes from that. Typically, things like that, like classes uh, and functions start with the uppercase, but like variables and properties and all that typically have this kind of case. So. True. Right. So I can go in here and I can say if it has a class of desktop only, and we'll let's, let's view the difference because there is a slight difference. If I say visibility hidden, it'll make it invisible. But notice that the invisible things kept their space. So you don't see them, but it still took up that little bit of space. If I say display none, it 
it will not display it at all. So it doesn't take that little bit of extra space. Okay? Right. I want that text to uh, display or take a link and then in Jamie click. Uh huh. But everything else is in the front of the text. So right. all those things are when I hover over it, it makes a link only disappear and another one will disappear. Right. What's the deal here? That's probably that's probably uh, visibility would be uh, visible. Yeah. So visibility hidden, visibility of visible. All right, so let's say we're happy with this as our mobile design. Now we're going to add stuff in. We're going to slowly add stuff in back from our original style sheet. But we're going to put, well, let's do it, let's do it this way. All right, let's do it. Let's do it where we put things in a separate style sheet. So I'm going to rename the style sheet to desktop. And I'm going to go and I'm going to put that style sheet in this page as well. And you can do that. You can have two style sheets within a page. So let's go and do that. When I do that, When I do that, we're sort of back to where we were before. And unfortunately, we're back to where we were before for both the mobile and the desktop version. All right? Because we haven't specified when to use which style sheet. All right? If you don't specify, it's going to use that style sheet. And if you have two style sheets and you don't specify either of them, it's always going to use both. Here's the idea. We're going to specify that we always want this style sheet. This is our base style sheet. This is going to have the stuff that we want to have in common, whether it's on a desktop device or on a mobile. We then want to add on and overrule in the case of a desktop device, but only for a desktop device. So we need a way to do what's called a media query to say, hey, the second style sheet, st style sheet you don't get all the time. You only get if you meet these conditions. So let's look up a media query in CSS. I want to take.
pops up. I can add to this style sheet a media query. Media equals screen. And minimum width is at least, let's do 600 pixels. So, screen means a computer screen. And it's at least 600 pixels wide, so that style rule applies. Now, if we make this smaller, notice that at this point, we get this style sheet. So when it's the full width of the page, when it's the full width of the page, we get this style sheet. Why? Because style sheet A and style sheet B both apply. Okay? Style sheet A and B both apply. When I make it narrower, or when we're on a mobile device, only this style sheet applies because we are not on a computer screen and or our minimum width is not at least 600 pixels. Make sense? The first style sheet is your basic bare bones. This is how it's going to look on a mobile device. The second style sheet is this is how it's going to look on a bigger screen. And then we put in that media query to say, hey, this is the only circumstances under which we apply that second style sheet, is if the screen is bigger. So what that means is that second style sheet is going to override, override overrule the stuff in the first style sheet. So in the first style sheet, I say the body has a background of yellow. In the desktop style sheet, I say the body has a background of bg.png. And the font family is this. So notice on the bigger screen, we have a different set of font families. Uh, actually, we don't. Um, but we could. The header was defined as having this in the basic style sheet. In the overall style sheet, the header has these properties. So notice the header overrules it and now has a dotted border instead of the solid border like it does on the smaller screen. Uh, it would, as it turns out, by overrule also has font families. I'm going to get rid of these font families to better demonstrate that. So if I get rid of all the font families, and that's an excellent point, If I get rid of all the font families from here, then these two will have the same font family. Why? Well, because the first style sheet has font families, and the desktop version gets that style sheet. And the second style sheet, which only applies, doesn't have that. And therefore, um, there's nothing, it's not overruling the fonts that are in the first style sheet. Does this make sense to everyone? This is our own little mini version of CSS Zen Guard, right? And this is why I had several assignments that said make two style sheets. All right? 
make two style sheets because I want to get you used to the idea that the same content can look different. All right? And that's, a, that's, that's important for a lot of different reasons, but it becomes especially important when you talk about mobile devices because mobile devices have different characteristics than a desktop screen. So typically you want a simpler layout. Notice also that, oh, a little bit of a problem here, small problem. Notice that those desktop only screen uh, sections don't show up on the mobile, but they also don't show up on the desktop version. How would I make them display on the desktop version? Yep, on the desktop CSS, I display it. So I can go in here and say desktop only. Instead of desktop only displaying none, I don't have anything about desktop only in this style sheet. So it doesn't overrule it. But I can overrule it by saying desktop only, I want the display to be block. So now on the bigger screen, we get the more content. On the smaller screen, we get no content for those. So those only show. And in fact, because of the way I wrote the media query, saying screen and minimum width 600, there's actually what's called a breakpoint in this page. As you make the page smaller, when it gets to a certain point, boom, it switches over to, to that. So we can make that 800 pixels. Yeah, but I'll tell you, people are getting used to that more because they're seeing it more. I see it a lot of times when I go to uh, websites. Um, let's look, if I'm not mistaken, LC's website does something like that. I might be wrong. Notice we have the navigation. We have all this business. We have these things which are four across. But if we go to a certain point, yeah, it's only two across. Notice that at this point, boom, it snaps and it goes into mobile mode. If you open up your uh, mobile device and went to this page, this is how it looks. Even the point where the navigation looks different. We use that navigation as opposed to that navigation. A lot of mobile, a lot of mobile uh, sites use this, what's called a hamburger, you know, because it sort of looks like a hamburger with the two buns and the patty in the middle. If you use your imagination, it does, all right? Uh, and, and the reason for that, again, is on a mobile sc uh, device's screen, real estate is, is more valuable, right? So if you're taking up a big chunk of space with navigation, this is a good way to have it more efficiently used, so you only see the navigation if you want to see it. Uh, we might talk about this when we do JavaScript, because this requires a little bit of JavaScript and a little bit of CSS stuff. All right. That, in a nutshell, is the process of doing a, at least, how do I want to put this? This is one of the chief techniques you do to make your website uh, look good for mobile, is apply these principles of responsive technique. Let's get an image just to sort of finish our thoughts here with this one before we move on to a second way that you can do this. Let's look for a Star Wars image. Or 
<coughs> there we go. I want a medium sized image. Who do we want to put on here? I wish I chose R2D2 or something. I guess I have to. I guess I have to Google them. Of course. I'm gonna spend like the rest of the class looking for the best R2D2 image. I guess this one's okay. I'm going to throw this in the footer just to keep I'm going to put it in one of the mo. Uh, no, I won't. Never mind. So I put there for a credit. I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to edit it and I'm going to make it smaller. I didn't want to pick that. Oh well. Size it. Let's make it a width of 300 pixels. Okay. Now. I don't want this image to be bigger than 300 pixels on my page, right? Because there's only 300 pixels of width in the image. If I try to make it bigger than that, I'm going to get distortion because there's not enough information there. So if I put this inside of a section, If I put that in here, if I say in the CSS file, any image within a section, I want to give it 
100% of the available width. Now if I go to view this, That's probably okay, because that is probably less than 300 pic, uh, pixels, and there's no distortion. All right? However, if I go and view this on a mobile device, that's probably a little wider than 300 pixels right here. But it looks good, yeah. So I, I you know, I don't know if I'd worry about that. But what... <laughs> What you could do is you could say uh, max width auto. And what that will do is that won't make it any wider than the image actually is. That didn't really have an effect of this. But you can do that. OK, any questions about this? Now, the next thing we can do is we can do the same thing, but we can combine things into one style sheet. So instead of having two style sheets, we can have one style sheet. And we use the media queries inside the style sheet. All right? So, that has the advantage, if you're coding it, uh, that you can, oh, did I forget, to, I forgot to save it after I resized it. That is the, that is the problem. Or not. All right, anyhow. Yeah, you get the idea, yeah. Uh, I can do this, and I can put this in one style sheet file and just use media queries inside the style sheet instead of having two separate style sheets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this guy. Copy this guy. And what I could do in the main style sheet is do something like this. I'll put sort of the media query in here, like this. at screen and media with that. Then I can paste essentially the whole other style sheet in here. And so what that is saying is this section of the style sheet only applies to screen that's at least 800 pixels, a computer screen that's at least 800 pixels wide. This part of, uh, uh, applies to everything. Once I do that then, I can get rid of that other style sheet from my code and only have the one style sheet.
it doesn't work. Because I forgot to save it. Or for some other reason. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Thank you. Ah, not Max with auto. That was bugging me. It is Max with 100%. That means it'll make it no bigger than the image actually is. I don't think it matters, but we will change it. hundred percent sure about that if I if I this will definitely work if I put the pixels in because I know it's 300 pixels wide there we go never makes it bigger than 300 pixels okay hmm. yeah it is weird it doesn't didn't do what I thought it would and what the documentation said it would anyhow uh, now, you can juggle this if you want to. Like, for example, what I've seen a lot of people do is, like, they'll have the header, and right underneath it, they'll have the header for the bigger version, all right, with its own media query. So I could say, so I don't have to have just one media query section. I could say, okay, that's my style rule for the header, but... On a bigger screen, this is my style rule for the header. So I can see them next to each other at the same time. Do whatever you think works best. What I like about this is you can see everything all at once in one file. What I like about the other methods, I could mix and match, right? I could potentially have multiple style sheets for the desktop and a mobile version or whatever. So. Use whichever you feel comfortable with and whatever you prefer. All right. That's all I had today. I'm not sure what we're talking about Wednesday, but whatever it is, we'll talk about it. All right. See you up in lab.